Edie Lush, and I'm here at the Hub Culture Pavilion in Davos with a famous and happily returning, I hope, um, interviewee. I've got Esther Dyson from Adventure. Tell me why you're here at Davos. What's your message this well, year? This year, I'm a chairman of a global agenda council called Fostering Entrepreneurship. But what we decided was rather than just foster the entrepreneurs, what we really want to do is help them to grow and scale because a single entrepreneur sitting around on his or her own doesn't actually create much value. They, they might get funding, but we want to help them turn the funding into a real company. So that means for every entrepreneur, you need a team, you need a partner, techies, you need business people, ultimately HR, billing, mm -hmm. customer support, depending on what you're in. But the value is created when you build an organization that makes lots of people more productive, not when you simply give one hero entrepreneur 100K to get started. So isn't that the job of the VC or the guys at the banks or somebody who funds um, them? It is partly the jobs of the VCs, but many of them are bankers and really mm -hmm. don't know much about management. Our, me our message here in Davos is to governments and especially to employers or, or companies you know, it's, it's not social responsibility, but those little companies that you don't pay much attention to, mm -hmm. they're a source of innovative new products. They could be a great addition to your supply chain. Mm -hmm. There's a guy you're going to interview shortly who could help you hire young people from university and find out which ones are really going to be good. They are people who can, you can, co-market their products and, and extend your product line. I met a woman yesterday who has a cool suitcase that Lufthansa should put into its catalog. Mm -hmm. uh, don't fear these companies. Co-opt them and you'll find that you add innovation, you add sparkle. You, it, It's good for your business to work with these small companies. If you're laying people off, don't just lay them off. Maybe fund them to go start something Mm -hmm. Because these are people who have business experience. They have corporations with so many resources in, in terms of understanding the processes, in, in having distribution channels, in knowing how pharma works so they can help introduce a new drug. And they can leverage those talents by cooperating with these smaller entrepreneurial ventures who in turn need precisely the skills and access and infrastructure that the large companies have. So I know that you're interested in the health um, side. Is there yeah. a company that you want to help scale up or is there a sector that you think really needs help and, and could answer some of the questions that we all talk about here in Davos, for example? Well, yeah, so it, it's an example that fits. It's called mm -hmm. Omada Health and they are a company that counsels people who just got a diagnosis of prediabetes. Mm -hmm. So they, one counselor has 10 groups of 10 people each, counsels them both online with a curriculum about diet and eating behavior and exercise and sleep and so forth. And that is, to me, it's a lot more exciting to keep people healthy mm. than to try and fix them later when they've got all kinds of diabetes related complications. Isn't and it difficult to get um, cooperation between, for example, the NHS? and small little companies. Yeah. There's so many hurdles to get past. Well, Patients Know Best in mm -hmm. the UK is an example of a company working with NHS to mm -hmm. do patient health records. And in the US, Omada is working with various health insurance plans mm -hmm. that are thinking long-term. If we spend a few thousand dollars on Omada now, we're not going to be paying the expensive costs of diabetes treatment later. So. For them, we're a source of an innovative but successful way of keeping people that they're insuring healthy. Uh, same thing applies to employers. They, they really want their employees to be healthy. It's not just avoiding the costs of healthcare. It's, they want the guys to come into work. They want them to be productive. And maybe it's not them, maybe it's their families. They don't want them taking time off to go care for a sick mm -hmm. child. So there's a lot that's a value to corporations, both as employers and as insurance plans or whatever, in health prevention or mm -hmm. illness prevention rather than simply cures and, and pharma and so forth. Are you getting a lot of support for your ideas? Yeah, actually, yeah. this isn't an idea. This is a right. one of these startups that's 
-hmm. at this point where it's beginning to scale. We're hiring right. like crazy. We've got lots of interest from various insurance, health plans, and employers. So far only in the U.S., but it's something that personally I would love to see copied. We, mm -hmm. we don't... Yeah, we have a lot of room to grow in the U.S. We don't mm -hmm. need to necessarily go into right. India, but I would love to see somebody doing the same thing in mm -hmm. India with an Indian cast, Indian mm -hmm. food, mm -hmm. Indian health systems. Diabetes is a big problem, unfortunately, everywhere. Absolutely. And the great thing about this kind of problem is solving it is actually an opportunity. Fantastic. Esther Dyson, thank you so much for stopping into the Hub Culture Pavilion here in Davos, and I'm Edie Lush. Thank you. Aww.